somebody. You ain't got to say no name, but they gonna know who you're talking I mean, about. I'll just be the interviewer. You get right here. Let me get you. I'll interview this time. Yeah, let me go. Oh, here we here, baby. Here we here. Here we here. Here we here, baby. Woo! Here we here. Here we here. Here we here. this bitch warm. There's a lot of money. Y'all niggas play World War II. Suck, suck, count with the team. I don't know, it don't really look like it gets no. the way the way is kind of is zoomed in the video. Oh, that's cool. I just did. like it's all to like the edge of the feet. Person. Oh. Like, your hands still in the camera. It started recording the yeah. yeah, I just put the Christmas shirt. <laughs> hey listen, 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 listen. So today on Word on the Street, we got a little flip rose, you know what I'm saying? I'm the interviewer today. Hey, don't be whispering on my set. Appreciate you. Okay, uh uh. So, <laughs> welcome yes, back to <laughs> I just want to say I'm here to stay. So I, I know I heard that y'all were trying to. Oh God! Oh God. <laughs> okay, okay, start over, start over, start over. Y'all shut the fuck up. I heard you. <laughs> okay, welcome back to Word on the Street. We got the crew here. You know, we got Josh, we got Jameer, huh. our interviewer. He, well, we trade a role today. We got my boy Larry. You know what I'm saying? Today we'll get to know our our cast here. You know what I'm saying? Let's get started. First question. Let everybody tell everybody where y'all from. I'm Josh. I'm from uh, original Mississippi. And I heard about Man, what the oh. fuck? We're <laughs> gonna try this again. We're gonna try this again. We're gonna this again. We're gonna get kicked off the show. Cut! 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 Okay, here we go. <laughs> listen, listen guys, alright, today we're gonna get to know everybody on the cast. Start with Josh. Tell everybody where you're from, maybe where you graduated from. I'm from Ridgeland, Mississippi. Uh, I graduated from Ridgeland High School. <laughs> I feel like that's a given because I'm from Ridgeland, Mississippi. Larry. <laughs> Larry. What's up, guys? I'm Larry Jr. Most people call me Dale. From the county of Mississippi, from Newton County High School. Newton County, Newton County, very interesting school. You <laughs> Hey, yeah, they suck, but uh, anyway, I'm Jameer Pinkston. I'm from Forest, Mississippi, but I went to Scott Central High School. Okay, okay. Home of Victoria Vivian, baby. Yeah, which oh, one? Oh, which I got the night. I got Zion back on. Oh, I'm going to trump both of y'all. I'm going to trump both of y'all. Don't even worry about that. Uh, my name is Tavis here. I'm from Kaziesco. I have Oprah. I also have Jane Barrett. It's the first black person that went to Ole Miss. Hey, but listen, though. Next question, next question. So, um, Larry, we'll start with you. Uh, what made you choose to come to state and major in what you're majoring in? And what are you majoring in? I'm majoring in chemical engineering. So, state was really the best option in the state. Uh, probably the best place and the most opportunity. That's just my, my thought process. Oh, okay, okay. Um, Josh, you're in a band. Um, tell me about how the band is. Like, do you enjoy it? The, you know what I'm saying? Uh, some days are better than others. Okay, some days are better than others. Yeah. Some days I feel like, man, I could really be sleeping. And then other days I'm like, man, I'm really tired. And I'm, I'm having fun, but I still want to sleep. You know, whatever I have to answer on the show. Um, Jameer, <laughs> you know, you, you got a lot of business dealing with different things. Like, do you enjoy, you enjoy uh, all your business dealings? Uh, yeah, you can say that. They bring me pretty good money. Certified hustle, I'm do whatever it takes to get paid. So. I respect it. You gotta respect the man with hustle. You know what I'm saying? Most definitely, most definitely. Okay, guys. Don't be throwing slick shots, buddy. Okay, guys. I mean, I already got slick shots on there. We're gonna change it up now. We're gonna change it up. Yeah, let's switch it up. Thank you. Th your thinking process. What's one quality you're looking for in your future wife? I guess I'll start this one out. One key quality is loyalty. I'd rather her give me loyalty over love because you can love somebody that's good. That's deep. That's a deep answer. I can't lie. I respect it. Yes, sir. Josh? Self awareness, bro. If you're aware when you're being a clown and a foolish, then you beautiful. Even though beautiful, that's an ugly word, but you beautiful. But if you're not self aware, then you what did he say? What did he say? Okay, uh, Larry. <laughs> it wasn't even funny, bro. Like, okay. <laughs> Shit, somebody's a little aggressive. There. Well, anywho, I think to me, one of the most important 
qualities or virtues of a woman, it's probably empathy. Because empathy, you can see me for as a man and not expect like unrealistic expectations from me. It's like, you know, as humans are all limitations, right? Right or wrong. We know how, how much how much we can take, how much we can give. We have to find a balance between that. I think that's important. Uh, before you go to your next question, I'm with you on that unreal expectations because I had a young lady tell me in order to get her, I had to, <laughs> what's that parachute down in her front yard? That's a very, very good question. As a man, you, you have to have awareness to know your downfall, you know? Of course. Of course. So, as, as a man, what is something you can get better at to become a better man for a woman? Josh, we'll start with you. Ooh, y'all, y'all, I don't even know why y'all put me on this. Uh, I'm, I'm Catholic because I deserve to be here. <clears throat> but how can I be better as a man? Uh, I don't know, because I'm, I'm honest, I'm self-aware, I'm loyal. Uh, oh, oh, I got it, I got it. I don't, I don't feel emotion all the time. Like, bro, I, I like empathy. Yeah, like, that, that's difficult, bro. Because, like, what I got to be in my feelings for, I mean, and, like, you know, communicate my feelings for all of them. That's for the birds, and I'm not eating. Stop playing with me. Interesting. Interesting. Larry, hey. I think the one thing I can improve on as a man is probably, I think probably be more understanding of the present situation. Sometimes it seems like you think of one thing, you know, and something totally different. You have to be very careful about assuming things. That's another thing. You have no example what's really going on what someone's on. Jameer? Uh, I think I say communication, because I'm one of them guys, you know, I ain't going to say too much. I'm going to let it be whatever it is. I need to learn how to talk more. You know, be there for you, be able to tell you when something's wrong or not. You know, don't be a, such a hard light all the time, but be able to speak my feelings out to you. Okay. All right, all right, boys, all right, boys. Next question, though. Um, what did you think is one of the biggest misconceptions of yourself that people have? There, we'll let you go first, then we'll, uh, Jameer, then Josh, you finish it off. I don't know one thing. I'm making people that always assume that I'm quiet. That's just definitely not me. I just don't really talk to people about don't really feel like that. It's just honesty. Um, you said misconception people have about me? Yeah, the biggest misconception. one. The biggest one is people think I do illegal activities. <laughs> I'm not with that at all. Why would I say that on camera, Vlad? So you don't know you, you calm down. You're, you're, you're not an interviewer. You're not the interviewer. Calm we, down. We on YouTube with this. No, of course. But no, I do neither of those things. I know I handle my business and I get to the bag rather quickly. But but I don't do nothing no illegal activity. Uh, let's see. Misconceptions. I have bad taste in music. I heard about that. Yeah, I heard about that, and now I shouldn't be on this show, but hey, surprise, Ooh. I'm back. Uh, but other than that, another misconception is I don't have any because of like, <laughs> I mean, like people don't really know me, so I don't really, really listen to people that don't know me. So, uh, well, I mean, great. Okay. Yeah, I, I talk, know. I talk right. a lot. Next question. You know, I've seen on social media a couple of times that social media is a fake reality because people don't show their true selves on it. How y'all feel about that? I think that's the true statement that the parent has spoken. Because check this out, right? We've all been on Twitter. You see a girl be like, oh, what's someone who love me? What's someone who take me on a date? Or what's someone who come call me right now? <laughs> as soon as somebody shoot that shot, Get that bullshit out of here. I'm not looking for anything serious right now. Okay, buddy, alright. Um, <laughs> are, are, are you speaking from personal experience or are you speaking from general experience? That's fun. General experience. I mean, personal experiences, whatever. Are those moments with them the same thing? 
especially girls that were supposed to be local, per se, friendly, outgoing type of girls or whatever? Are you talking to a lot of folks right now? Are you and I are a murderer. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, I definitely feel like social media uh, screw up the perception. Yeah, perception uh, of lock nights, but relationships definitely. Because, uh, I mean, not just women cap on the line, but I mean, I, I like women, so I'm going to go with it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, women do cap on Twitter, definitely. Uh, Instagram, I mean, and Snapchat. They love the cap on Snapchat, bro. Like, they'll post something on their main story, and on their private story, they're a whole other person. Ridiculous. Slut on by mud. I don't get it. God! Come here. Uh, yeah, that's definitely a true statement. People live lives that they're not really living on social media, you know. Or posting some very old. Man, I'm tired of seeing the same thousand dollars every week now. We know that's the same thousand dollars from two months ago. You know, it ain't that. People want to be social media famous so bad. Do this stuff in real life. Restricted by your financial, you know what I'm saying? You're, you're silly, financial silly. But you, you don't think that some of those use those things are just like a false happiness? I mean, I can't say that because I feel like you're not. If you have money and you can live your life free, comfortably, not not rich, like that's more not rich, but you can live your life free. You're not gonna be. You can be as happy because you're gonna get be able to go get things or just be able to not live a life to where. You're struggling to get things, you know what I'm saying? Where if you go to the car lot and you say, oh, I want that car right there. You can get that car because you're financially, you know what I'm saying? Fair but do you think money can cause happiness? Is the question. Jameer? I'm going to say yes and no. Because like you said, you know, if you got money, I say you're rich, but you can go to the car lot, hey, I want this new Dodge Charger, I can go get it. That's going to make me very excited. But also, you know, going back to my note, I know a lot of rich people that sad because, you know, you can't cuddle money at night. You can't love your money the way you would love another human being. A lot of rich people are depressed because, you know, all they got is their money. Or they got people there that's only there with them because of the money. Right. So, yeah. Josh? Uh, well, from personal experience, I mean, like, I'll, I'll purchase something then. Like, I'd be like, dang, I'm happy, and then after like four hours, I'm like, dang, what's next? So, I mean, it's just like a, a continued cycle, because you you gonna always want to get something to fill that void of. So, I mean, no, money, money's not going to get you happiness. You're going to get you happiness. And people are not going to get you happiness, because people are not, the, you can't depend on them. Depend on yourself on anything. But if you're depending on yourself, don't you need money to pay attention to being very good? No. You don't? You can find other things. Thank you. I think money causes a false sense of happiness. Because when you think about it, when you go on vacation, you enjoy that vacation for the moment. But eventually you have to go back home and back to reality. You get a new car, you enjoy it for a while, but eventually that new car is not a new car anymore. Or a new chain, it's new right now, it's hard, it's iced out. But eventually somebody's probably got a bigger chain than that. So now you're constantly chasing after the same feeling of ecstasy that you had before. So I feel like it can create a false sense of security, a false sense of hope. Because financial wealth, of course, obviously it's, it helps you out, like living day to day, whatever. But like emotionally, like as Jameer said, there's a lot of rich people who, who do, suffer from depression. Bro, like, if we're being real, not everybody's about to be rich. No, no, no. See, I think you got the question. You don't have to be rich to be financially secure. You see what I'm saying? Because the mass majority of people are going to live paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. But where if somebody's going to be financially secure, he they have money to where they're not rich, they're not millionaires, 
they're not billionaires. Some not even, some are gonna be ten thousand there, you know, in that in that ballpark to where you can go do like right, you're comfortable. Yeah. Not rich. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. A lot of people aren't gonna be comfortable. Right. Right. It's a it's a mindset thing, bro. It's a mindset thing. And a lot of people don't have that mindset to be more than they are. Okay, okay. Feeding off that question. If you were rich, do you feel that you should give to your inner circle, give money to, or how would you help them get to where you are? What would be your course passion? I got to take this one first. But basically, if I'm rich and my inner circle is struggling, I'm putting everybody out. Like, a lot of people like going, ask, what do you mean by putting everybody out? Well, I might buy you a business here. I might give you a percentage of this. You know what I'm saying? Just basically help you out to start something and build yourself up. So once you, you know what I'm saying, financial stable at the same peak I am, you get it right back. You know, and then keep your money flowing. I want everybody in my inner circle to be bothered. Uh, before y'all ask, okay, you said you're about to do business. See, now I've had this, I've had this come up a couple times, and I wouldn't agree on necessarily buying them a business. But what I'm saying is like, I can get a business, right? Mm -hmm. like, it could be anything, but I'm going to learn in letting them run the business, but the business still being under my name until they yeah, can make I the money. Yeah, I understand that. You know, that's basically like what I would basically say, you know, give them a foot in the door. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Give them a foot in the door. But I don't want to give them a total foot in the door just quite yet. I want them to be able to learn the business, you know what I'm saying? And nobody's going to value your money like you, of course. so I want to make sure they're going to value my money first. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I feel you 100%. Josh, I'll let you go. I, I, I can't give, like, I'm not giving money to them because if I give them money, then I'm a crutch. They'll, right. they'll depend on me. And obviously, if I made it, then you can make it also. But I mean, most of the people in my circle don't have that mindset that, you know, yeah. I can't hang around with people that don't want to be better than they were the day before. Right. Right. But you got some that just, you know, they got the same mindset as you, but their road was a little bit rocky. Yeah. So sometimes you might have to, you know, push them yeah. a little bit more, because some people need that extra boost. I mean, and you're not giving. If, you, if you're giving them money to better lives, and they're gonna, you know what I'm saying, and they can improve their lives. You're not, I will not even say it's giving, it's gifting. You know what I'm saying? You're gifting them with an opportunity that a lot of us won't have, if you're rich. Yeah, I won't do that. Never done? I'll, I'll, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I might start. Let's see what Larry's. Let's see Let's see Larry's mindset. I think that it's like the difficult thing to say are like outright. Because so, to me, obviously the mindset is important. And the situation is important also. You don't want to be somebody's crutch. If you just give it and give it, they're never going to be realize like, hey, I'll just do something different. Just put myself in a different position. So like I think it's basically being based on situation.